Well, welcome to another edition of Around the Mick. I'm Kyle Nedrant from the Indy Star, and thanks for joining us here at the Marriott uh, on the east side of Indianapolis. And we're wrapping up, hard to believe, uh, a great football season and, and joined by a couple of guys who had big impact, uh, not only on their teams, but uh, on football locally uh, here for the last few years. Uh, Cameron McGrone uh, from Lawrence Central, linebacker, and Reese Taylor, uh, Ben Davis quarterback. And uh, the guys have uh, got their awards here, as you can see. McGrone, the Defensive Player of the Year for the Mick Network, and, and Reese Taylor, uh, the Offensive Player of the Year. Thanks for coming on, guys. Sure, thank you. Well, let's start with you, Reese. Uh, you're coming off a, a state championship uh, win. Uh, exciting season for you guys. We're, we're dominant uh, pretty much all the way through, winning the 6A championship. Uh, kind of talk a little bit about you know, what that's like to, to go through a night like you guys had Saturday. 63, uh, by the way, 63-14 to 14 win over Penn uh, in the state title game. Hard to believe, but uh, you know, what's it like when everything's clicking and, and you can kind of end your career on that kind of note? Um, Saturday night, we was all in one tempo. All the seniors came together that whole night. That was probably one of the best week of practice we, hold, we had the whole season. Cam, I know you guys had a chance to, to play him this year. Played him twice, and the second time, uh, a really tough game, uh, probably the, the second toughest you guys played uh, other than the Warren Central game. But uh, you know, playing against them, what was it you, you kind of had to, to try to do to, to slow them down? And, and, and did you feel like you did you maybe did that a little bit better the second time you played them? I'm curious to hear there's a proposal by the IFCA to seed the sectional uh, moving forward. I know you guys are done playing and it won't affect you at all, but I, you know, from a, from a player's perspective, and I'll ask both of you, would you, would you like to see it where, Reese, maybe you play a possibility of playing a, a mixed team down the road and, and later on in the tournament? Would that be appealing to, to, to a guy who plays in the mix? Yeah, I feel like that was probably the hardest sectional that ever happened. Both That was probably a semi-state and and um, state championship game right there. That was mm -hmm. like that was the hardest game we played. And everything else, I feel like we cruised through. But I, I didn't know Ben Davis was the East Side School now because <laughs> played all East Side School. But um, well, they, they were very good teams. Probably the hardest defense I played against. Um, offense was on tempo, but I feel like we executed how we wanted to. Had a great week of practice. I feel like we was focused this whole um, playoff season. All right. How about for you, Cam? I know you, you know you're up against. You know, Warren, Ellen had a good team, you know, these guys are all in the same group. Do you think there's a better way to, to operate the tournament than that? Yeah, you know, um, to me it's easy just to see them, you know, just like college does. But, you know, like, I don't know, like, you know, like, I don't run the IHSA, so, you know, I can't really talk about that. But, yeah. you know, like, I, like, you know, like, just, just to have, just to have it more fair, you know, like, just like we said, like, Ben Davis is far out west and we're, you know, like, all in the east, you know, just, you know, just about pitching it. 15 minutes away from each other, you know, in the radius, so it didn't really make much sense, but, you know, like, uh, we couldn't really talk about it much because we don't run anything, and, you know, like, you know, like at the end of the day, we just have to play football, and just, you know, like, if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best, so. I know I have the advantage. I'm able to see the Mick teams play, and, and uh, I know people elsewhere in the state, I kind of get tired of hearing, you know, how great the Mick is, but I'm like, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. All these MIC teams win, seems like they win the state championship pretty much year in and year out. The best of the MIC rises to the top. I mean, how much, you know, Reese, does that prepare you once you see other teams later on in the tournament? Yeah, I feel like the MIC was played each other too, way too early in the, in the tournament, but I feel like um, 
after we played the hardest team that we played, um, we had to even focus even harder because we had to take each week harder and harder. And I feel like the um, the uh, pen game, we, we went to it very focused, very confident. We had a great crowd there to help us back us up, and I feel like we executed very well. Should mention uh, Reese headed to IU uh, on scholarship. Cameron going to uh, Michigan on scholarship. Cam, start with you. What what are you kind of what are you doing now to prepare yourself for for what's next for for you? Well, definitely. Uh, well, you know, as of right now, uh, I'm uh, I'm training with the track team and my uh, linebacker coach for the Army Bowl that's coming up. And then after that, uh, I'm definitely going to. Uh, you know, uh, compete in track, get my speed up, keep my speed, uh, because that's what like I'm really being recruited for as a you know speedy linebacker. Um, you know, like I'm not really get, uh, I'm not really worried about my weight. I'm just trying to stay fast. But you know, just just to stay conditioned. You know. Yeah. yeah for you, Reese, I know the possibility that you could try some quarterback, and, and I know people have asked me that, and I'm sure ask, asking you that as well. But what's what's next for you getting ready for IU? Really, I'm gonna have to put on a few pounds because I'm I'm a little under right now. But I feel like my speed and my athleticism is very is my strength. So I'm gonna keep working at that, and I'm gonna keep working on my on my, on my um, downfalls and my and my weaknesses. Well, great. Really appreciate appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, two guys I've really enjoyed covering uh, for the last few years, and uh, have had a chance to to sit back and watch them from my spot in the press box. And they're gonna do great uh, moving on in the Big Ten. And uh, congratulations on the award. Thank as you. Well. I appreciate it very you much. Bet. We'll be back here with another segment talking to uh, Mike Kirshner, uh, the Ben Davis uh, State Championship coach, uh, here in our next segment. Well, back with our next segment here on Around the Mick here at the Marriott East, uh, on the east side of Indianapolis. I'm Cal Nendrit from the Indy Star, and uh, joined this segment by Mike Kirshner, uh, the 6A state championship coach. And thanks for coming on, Mike. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. You bet. Well, I know it's always a, a kind of a whirlwind. You, you got a lot of things going on throughout the season. I, have you been able to, to get a little bit of downtime, at least in the time since the, the title game? No, not really. I mean, got up early Sunday morning. You, know, you got back in the locker room. You had to get ready for equipment. Uh, clean up the day. I hadn't done the IFCA All-State stuff, got to get it done. So my wife asked me when I was going to sit back and enjoy it. And I said, probably in a few weeks when everything kind of dies down and the, the newness of it all wears off. You know, it's a great moment for the kids, great moment for the community, teachers, administrators, everybody involved. But uh, from a coaching standpoint, you, you kind of bounce and you kind of get ready for the next one. And I got another class of kids I got to start getting ready with. And um, the mind starts racing of all the things you want to do. So. Well, we talked after the game uh, Saturday, you know, briefly, of course, around deadline, trying to get my story in. But you know, it really was a special class. And, and, and I remember talking to you uh, several years ago when those guys were freshmen, and, right. and you, t you were talking about them even then, as far as what a, a good group it was. I guess you never realize how it's going to work out exactly, but. It seems like a great group of not only players, but you got a lot of leadership, it seems like, in that class. Yeah, we, we obviously they're a really good group of athletes, but the, the best part is they're really coachable. They, they loved to compete. You know, in that game for Saturday night, um, we, we jumped on them early, and I, I'm not sure Penn was ready for how hard we were going to compete and how hard we were going to go after them. And I think they kind of got caught sleeping a little bit. But they, they love to compete. They, they love the idea of playing the game. You know, me and Reese were talking on the way over here that, you know, the, some of the fun we have is just being at practice. And, and when kids love practice, the games kind of become easier. So we've known they've been a special group for quite some time. We've been really excited about their progression, both physically and on the field and off the field. And uh, it's going to be missed. You know, we, we're going to leave 54 seniors behind. So when we have our banquet, just the idea that I got to honor 54 seniors <laughs> is a long night. That is amazing. And I, I know Reese. Uh... You know, we talked about him a lot, and, and uh, you know, I called him, I think, Houdini a few times, or, or, you know, he just seemed like a magician out there with the football and the way he could get out of things that I don't think most people can see uh, coming. But, but, you know, what's he meant to you? He won our Offensive Player of the Year here for the Mick Network tonight, and 
and I know he's meant a lot to your program uh, the last three years, especially this year. Yeah, no, no, there's no question. You know, he started, became the starting quarterback about midway through his sophomore year. Um, what he means to us is a guy who, who literally shows up every day, does his work, um, doesn't look for the limelight, doesn't, doesn't look for credit, kind of, kind of passes credit on to other people, um, just does things the right way, the way you want a, an athlete to represent your team. He, he doesn't get, you know, unsportsmanship, you know, calls on him. He's just, he's just a quality young man and a good student, good person, and I use getting a winner is what I use getting. Do you think, I, talking to Reese a little bit, he said they may try him to see, you know, hey, maybe throw you out there at quarterback and see how you do. You think he, and he was realistic, said, I don't know, maybe I'm too too short to play there, but what do you think about, is that a, you think that's a potential possibility? I, I think it's an, a very good potential possibility. I talked to the IU coaches the last few weeks. Um, there's no doubt they're bringing him in as a quarterback. Now, if they find out he can't do it, obviously they'll move him to a receiver or a DB, but I, I'm, I, I 34 years I've been coaching, he can play quarterback. I had dinner with Coach Delahan Saturday after the game, and he said straight up he should be a quarterback at the next level because he can do things with a football most kids can't. He throws it. He's got a quick release. The ball comes off his hand. He's smart. He reads coverages. Uh, honestly, from a coaching standpoint, it's, it's, it's an ideal situation. I, I love talking to Coach Delahan. He, he was, as he was leaving the press box Saturday night, he was pretty much yelling that Reese should be a quarterback in college. And anybody who thought different, yeah, uh, argue know with what him. they're talking about. Yeah, that's right. exactly that's exactly right. He, uh, in fact, at dinner Saturday night, one of the IU coaches was there because he's my son-in-law, uh -huh. and Coach D was giving him the "This is why you should play him at quarterback" lecture. Right. You know, even though my son-in-law is a defensive coach, so <laughs> he's like, "Whatever, okay." <laughs> well, Coach Dillahan knows what he's talking about. Yep, but, he you does. Know, this, this is, uh, you know, we. I wrote a little bit about maybe where this team fits into the grand scheme of, and who knows really, I mean, it's, it's impossible to basically judge against mm -hmm. different generations of football, but I think when it's probably discussed, this team will, will come up, I would think, in, in maybe future articles someone else writes, yeah. or, or maybe I write, but I, I think they're at least at the table when you talk about all-time great teams. Yeah, I, you know, I, I've had the pleasure, if you call it that, coaching against the 91 team, and I was at Warren Central at the time, and we got beat 38-6, to six, and I thought that was the greatest thing I'd ever seen. And then I had the pleasure of coaching against the Warren Central team of 2006 when I was a defensive coach at Ben Davis, and I thought that was the greatest team I'd ever seen after they hung 76 on us um, and didn't really slow down. We, we really never slowed them down. And then I'm talking to a coach um, that's been around a long, long time, and he says, you got to throw the 58 manual team into that because that was the greatest coach team they had ever seen. I think they gave up one touchdown in 10 games. And then last night I get a call from a guy that has seen every state championship game since 1973. Wow. Every one. And I'm like, every class? He goes, every one. I've not missed a state championship game since 73. And he's telling me, he goes, I know the 91 team and I know the 2006 team and I'm telling you yours was the best I'd ever seen. So who is, who isn't, right. you know, with different eras, different styles of games are being played. All I know is this team's pretty special to us. You know, they probably have to rank up in there with one of the all-time greats, and, and um, it was an honor for me to just to be part of it. Right. Well, again, thanks so much. Ben Davis had a great crowd, too, oh, uh, by the way. Oh, fantastic crowd. I, I think they knew what was coming, possibly. Yeah, so. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but what, what they used to call the, the, the L.A. or the St. Louis Rams when uh, they, they were in St. Louis, and they called them the greatest show on, on, mm -hmm. greatest show on grass. And there were times that's what we looked like. You know, when, when you can uh, put 564 yards up, that quick, right. you know, and, and be up 49-7 against a quality team like Penn. Good things. Well, thanks again, Mike. And uh, again, Ben Davis, the Class 6A uh, state champions and uh, Mick champions as well in, uh, in a great season, 14-0 uh, and uh, in another state championship in the annals for the Giants. But again, thanks, Mike, and appreciate it. Thanks on a great, and congrats on a great season. Thank you. I appreciate you guys covering us. You bet. We'll be back here with another segment uh, here on our Around the Mick show from the Marriott East.
Well, back here with another segment on our Around the Mick uh, show here at the Marriott East. I'm Kyle Nedrip from the Indy Star, and uh, joined this segment by Jim Tonti from Warren Central uh, Wrestling. We talk football now. We're switching gears uh, to a, a sport that's getting started here as we go along into the into the high school season. And and Jim, I know we're turning the page from football to wrestling, and you guys have started already. How are things uh, unfolding so far? Good, for... good. I thought I was here to talk about seating for football in the sectional. <laughs> that's not what That's I'm a here hot for. topic right now. <laughs> so yeah, we, uh, no, we're just getting rolling, and um, you know we've uh, we've had a We've, our first tournament, uh, a week ago Saturday, and then we wrestled in our first dual meet against Lawrence North, uh, a, a Mick opponent, a good Mick opponent, um, last week. So. Well, I know you guys have uh, your own your own son graduated from uh, last year's team, and yep. uh, let's talk about Tristan a little bit. How did his uh, How did his freshman year go at Marion? It was uh, it's pretty cool. He was um, second on the team in uh, touchdowns. Uh, they ran him in that Wildcat, and, and he ran some running backs. So. Uh, he, he, it was neat. He had a good year. Got to touch the ball, you know, quite a few times. And um, you know, um, I kind of laugh at because one game he was three carries for four yards, but three touchdowns. So, <laughs> so that is maximizing your carries. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But no, he had he had a good year, and uh, I'm a little bit a little bit uh, disappointed that they didn't make it. The, you know, make the playoffs. They were ranked fifth to start mm -hmm. the season, and man, I'll tell you what, they had a, a couple games that. Um, that could have went either way, really down to the wire. I mean, I think St. Francis has a legitimate shot to win it, and you know that game. Uh, I would, I won't say they gave it away, but it, you know, it was a good game. Yeah. Well, it's great so. to see Marion, and I know you, Indy, lost early too. But yep. you know, two programs that are really. It's fun to see how many local guys uh, are making an impact on those teams. Well, Al had a great, great yeah. year at, a, at a, you know the LN kid, mm -hmm. Mick kid, had a great year at UND as well. Yeah. So. yeah. Al McKellar, uh, we, he was on the show last year. Yep. Uh, Lawrence North and Tristan Tante, who we're talking about from uh, Warren Central, uh, a couple of Mick guys making an impression. But uh, Jim, on your team this year, who are you kind of uh, expecting to do well, or some individuals you think will will uh, progress as the year goes along? Yeah, we've had some kids put in uh, put in some time. We're really pleased. We're very young. Um, we had one senior in the lineup uh, this the last two last two tournament you know tournament and the dual meet that we had and and uh, arguably he's got a kid behind him that's a sophomore that's pretty good too that could be in the lineup as well so we're we're young uh, but we really have a team that's got a lot of year-round wrestlers they're, they're kids that put their time in um, in the off season we we, uh, we won the triple crown freestyle folk style in Greco State um, for you know uh, ISWA USA wrestling so we got some kids putting in their time. Uh, Antoine Graves had a great offseason. He, he triple crowned himself. He won all three styles uh, in, in state. And then just uh, a month ago, won the preseason nationals in Iowa. Wow. Had uh, 65 kids in his weight class and uh, um, ended up beating a kid that had beat him in the quarterfinals the year before. So we got, we got um, high hopes for Antoine. Um, kind of had a hiccup last year in the semi-state and lost to a kid that he had beaten uh, earlier in the year. And then that kid went on to take fourth in the state. So... Um, we're expecting big things from, from Antoine. We have two other semi-state qualifiers back in uh, Danny Acevedo, our 160 pounder, qualified for semi-state at 170. And then Chris Stewart uh, was our six pounder last year, qualified at, at, uh, at 106 is at 120 uh, this year. So we've got uh, a, a little bit of mix of a junior group and then our freshman group, we have uh, a couple kids, uh, uh, Javon Ross and, and uh, David Pearson both had great schoolboy duel uh, uh, tournaments last year. Uh, both beat some highly ranked kids in the country at their at the schoolboy age, which is 13, 14 years old. Um, so they're at 106 and 113. So we're really looking forward to to their year. They're young, mm -hmm. and they're going to take some beatings. Um, but we're excited about this group, man. And I, just to know that, you know, as I told those guys, you know, it's a marathon, not a sprint. We're looking into next year with this group. And what they can accomplish, you know, by the time that junior group is seniors and that fresher group's sophomores. What 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 kind of a? Yeah, you know, I'm sure it's different for if a kid does another sport or if he's a multi-sport athlete. But what kind of off season do you guys have, or what 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 kind of you, do you do to prepare them? Oh yeah, wrestling's got an extensive off season. Um, really, I tell our kids I don't want to see them in August. And uh, you know, of course, you had kids like Tristan, that, mm -hmm. you know, and, and honestly, I encourage kids to to play multiple sports. Um, I kind of messed up with my older son. I still, to this day, think because I pushed him, you know, so much year round in wrestling. And uh, Tristan, I kind of mm -hmm. took the other route with it. He played baseball and football, and uh, 
and and he wrestled a lot off season. Don't get me wrong, but mm -hmm. um, there were days where he was doing three sports in one day. But <laughs> uh, but I mean today's, I mean it, it's almost kind of crazy. Um, I was kind of kidding with you about some parents yeah. at our <laughs> elementary <laughs> practice tonight, but. Uh, Wrestling has, I mean, honestly, even in August when I tell our kids I don't want to see them, I still have kids that are in Virginia Beach wrestling in, in, in a tournament or, you know, they're in Michigan wrestling in a tournament, you know, but I just stay away from it in August. Yeah. But the other 11 months out of the year, we're kind of we're kind of hitting it. Right. Doing something. Yeah, yeah we're doing yeah. something. Right. We're doing something. Well, I know you're hosting uh, you're hosting county. Yep. And uh, conference, is that right? Yep. We okay. got the MIC and we got the county. So two big tournaments, uh, two great tournaments. I mean, the Marion County... You know, I'll go back to when I was a kid wrestling in Marion County. It, you know, uh, I hope it, it's can, it's getting that luster back that it used to have. But if you used to be on the podium at the Marion County tournament, you know, there was an old saying: if you're at the podium on, at Marion County, you're gonna be at the podium at the state. Um, I think it's lost a little bit of that luster, but uh, the Marion County tournament is still a great tournament. And of course, you know, the mix. I don't care what sport we talk about, the mix. The mix is going to compete in every every sport. Right. So, um, very very good tournament. And we're hosting both this year, so it's going to be kind of cool. Well, great. Well, thanks for coming on, Jim. And, yes, sir. Uh, and good luck to you guys this year. Appreciate it, Kyle. You bet. Thank you, sir. Well, we'll be back here with another segment on Around the Mick. Uh, Kyle Nedner up here from the Indy Star from the Marriott East. Taking a drive to see the holiday lights. Whoa. Brought some candy so the kids don't fight. Whoa. Off to grandma's to celebrate. Whoa. To detour, so we're gonna be late. Whoa, whoa. Holiday road. Get on the holiday road in a Honda Pilot. See your dealer for great holiday deals during the Happy Honda Days sales event. Well, back with another segment here on Around the Mick from the Marriott East. I'm Kyle Nedenrip, and we're talking wrestling. Uh, we talked football earlier tonight, and again, our uh, Mick Players of the Year, uh, Cameron McGrone from Lawrence Central and Reese Taylor from Ben Davis. Uh, we're talking wrestling here with Cal Hoover from uh, Center Grove, and talking uh, off the air a little bit, and mm -hmm. uh, you're, what, the second longest tenured uh, wrestling coach in the mix? Yeah, or? it's uh, 12 years has snuck up on me pretty quick. Um, I've seen, and actually most schools I think have on, like, probably their third coach now. <laughs> but uh, Coach Silverman at North Central has got me by, uh, by a few anyway. Um, but it's, uh, I've gotten old real, real subtly here. I, I got to Center Grove in my 20s, and now I'm in my 40s. So it, creeps it up happens. On you. It that. happens. Yeah, that. it's okay. I'm good with it. Well, I know we talked a little bit about, you know, depending where you're at and how the football team's doing, it can push things back. And we see it with uh, basketball teams. If yeah. football teams make it late, it also affects uh, wrestling, too. The, uh, you know, in my 12 years, we've played at semi-state eight times in football. So mm -hmm. early on, we spent a lot of time rescheduling wrestling meets. Mm -hmm. So we've went ahead and we've back-scheduled everything. So we, we now open that first Saturday in December. So we actually, this year, with uh, losing at regional, we've had some of those football guys a little bit longer mm -hmm. than what we've used to, especially here lately. We've been on a run of, I think, six semi-states and mm -hmm. the state championship game the last two years. So we're, we're seeing guys. It's actually been a little bit strange having some of these yeah. guys in the room with us earlier because um, we are just not accustomed to that there. Yeah. Of course, Center Grove lost uh, uh, it to uh, Avon in yeah. the uh, regional this year, but I think it was the first time, yeah, first time they hadn't made the semi-state maybe seven years. So. It was, we had won six in a row. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we had some, my first two years there, we had lost in sectional. My third year was the 09 state championship mm -hmm. team that, that won. And then I think in 2010, we uh, maybe lost at semi-state and then we went on that run. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, I'm, I'm pretty well used to it. Yeah. My two years at Hamilton Southeastern, my second year we went to state championship game there too. So you're the good luck charm. Nah, I'm just used to that, and it, we <laughs> we we deal with it, and it's no big deal. So. Well, how about your team this year? What do you what do you kind of expect out of this group? Uh, it's 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 a good mix. We returned three state qualifiers and and five guys that went to uh, semi state, um, and had a few other st uh, returners back. Um, we're trying to get healthy. We've got a couple of the football players that are banged up. Um, we lost what was probably a kid who was in the mix for a state championship. Um, he had his a ACL fixed last Tuesday. Mm. And so that one's gonna sting a little bit, um, but we're gonna, we'll be very solid kind of from about 138 up. Below that, we're gonna be inexperienced and a little thin, but as long as we can stay healthy and we'll be okay. We've had, it's, it's been a good group of guys. They've been fun to work with. Um, they're learning, we're getting better. Um, 
without competing yet, it's a little bit hard to tell where we're at. We'll know more after Saturday, of course, and we can get, get fixing things. So. Right. How, how do you kind of approach the season? Do you, do you look at certain, uh, you know, vantage point of, you know, we want to be here by this meet, here by this meet, or how do you kind of approach um, it? A little, a little bit. We, we've got our, we go to the big Mishawaki Invitational between Christmas and New Year's, which is a, a 32 team uh, tournament, and it's a great test. And usually by that time, our football players have kind of found rhythm and, mm -hmm. and are, are in uh, really starting to, to look like what we expect them to look like. So our county tournament's right before Christmas. So about the county tournament, about Mishawaka, we're wanting to really start to hit our stride. Before that, you know, we obviously want to do well, but it's we'll, we'll kind of take what we can get. We're usually kind of slow starters mm -hmm. just with uh, guys coming in late. So. Um, I don't get too worried about it. I, I, I really only care about peaking for the state tournament. You know, it, nobody remembers really anything else. Right. Y you want to win every time you go out there, but as long as we perform well at the end, that's what matters. Right. So. And, and uh, Wrestling State, if you haven't been, it's one of the, uh, maybe the best state environment of, of any sport. You know, what's yeah. what's that like being out? Yeah, it's got to be a, a it's cool thing. It's unique. I, I, I won't say which IHSA commissioner, but I have had IHSA commissioners tell, tell me in person that that is their best singular state finals event. Mm -hmm. um, if you've never checked it out, it's well worth it, especially that championship round when they turn off the lights mm -hmm. and we're in Bankers Life Fieldhouse and just two kids out there in front of 14, 15,000 people. Uh, it's pretty special. So... Um, it's, uh, it's probably the most stressful, nervous <laughs> two days of most of our lives, right. I would say. It's, it's, uh, it, it, it's hard to describe. Right. It, it's special, though. I was asking Coach Tonti, anything you guys in particular try to, I know kids are at different stages or playing different sports or whatever. Do you, do you try to do, uh, I'm sure you do a lot in the off season. Is there yeah. certain things you're maybe doing differently now than you did in years past? Oh, I'm always trying new things. We're always trying to get better. Uh, I think the biggest thing is with, with wrestling, there's a lot of philosophies and a, and a lot of techniques and a, and a lot of things that will work. So as you try to figure out what will work for your team, uh, some techniques that I taught two years ago, five years ago, ten years ago, we don't teach anymore. Mm -hmm. Others we do. You start, you know, we, why practice something over the course of the season for five hours when you get two scores off of it the entire mm -hmm. year. So we're always, we're always trying to do things better, um, always trying to teach better. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, 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 a un, it's, it's a really unique sport. There's, there's a lot of technique, there's a lot of things that go into it, but you try to make a system that's simple that kids can understand and you can get them to improve as fast as possible. So the teacher in me is trying to always do things better. I'm always tinkering and I think that keeps me entertained too. I think if you just went in right. there and did the same thing every day, I don't think I could do that, so All right. it's part of it. All right. Well, thanks so much for coming on, Absolutely. Kyle, and uh, best of luck to you guys. As Center Grove moves, moves forward this year, and and uh, and uh, I'm sure you'll be getting your meets in here pretty soon. Yeah, it's what's coming, hard and heavy. Right. So. <clears throat> well, thanks again. We'll we'll be back here with another segment on our Around the Mick talking wrestling tonight uh, from the Marriott East. Now at the Honda Summerbration sales event, you can get a great deal on a Honda Accord and make every summer moment that much brighter. Summer fun starts here at the Honda Summerbration sales event. Hurry in and get a great deal on a Honda Accord from KBB.com's best value brand today at your local Honda dealer. I'm well, back here with another segment on Around the Mick. I'm Kyle Nedrit from the Indy Star. And uh, join this segment by Thomas Johnson from Lawrence Central. And I uh, appreciate you coming on, Thomas. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks for having me. You bet. He's in his first season at, at Lawrence Central and uh, a former Lawrence North wrestler, so uh, knows all about the Mick. And uh, we're here at the Mick, Mick Network, so glad to have a, a Mick guy on. But, you know, Thomas, uh, first year, how do you, how do you kind of go about uh, getting the program started over there? Well, um, broad question, I know. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> we've got a, a great group of young men and women uh, at Lawrence Central. They have been, it's a dedicated group that's been involved in the sport for years from elementary through the middle school. Uh, these are a group of guys that will travel all around the state, all around the country to wrestle. They love it. Um, so that part has been kind of easy, getting them to buy into wanting to work hard and, and believe in getting better every single day. Um, our biggest goal right now is just not only 
changing the culture of the wrestling program, but the culture of the school itself. Um, I believe that it's fun to, to win tournaments and win titles, but it's a lot more fun when every, every team in the building is doing well. Mm -hmm. And having student athletes support their peers is something that's really important to me. So it's been something I've wanted to push to have our guys be involved and support football and soccer and tennis and girls basketball, boys basketball. Um, building that, that community within the school where peers are supporting each other and building each other up, it's just gonna make all of our programs better in the long run. Now you were coaching under Jim Tonti, right? At, uh at Warren? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I spent three years in Warren, two at the middle school level, and then this past season I moved up to the high school and I was assistant for Jim. Um, I was still on the staff into August of this year, <laughs> and I got the, the call for LC. It was, it was really tough to, to walk away from Warren. Um, Jim Tante is an incredible coach, an incredible mentor. He's been a great friend to me, a great role model. He's someone that I still call once or twice a week at any hour of the day to just ask for questions and advice. Um, that's one thing that I've really appreciated is that from day one he told me, look, I'll support you in anything you want to do. If you ever need help, I'm your guy. And he's, and he's kept to it. Um, we've had a lot of conversations. He gives me a lot of good advice and good counsel. So it's been a great experience working with him and for him and now working to beat him. Yeah. <laughs> How much of what he did do you kind of implement into to your own program now? And I'm sure you want to put your own thumbprint on what you're doing, but, but how much do you kind of go back to maybe what you learned from him to, to what you do now? Uh, well, actually, there, there's quite a bit, um, especially on the administrative side of running a team and a program and building a, a successful elementary and middle school club. Um, so on the administrative side of things, I, I've taken a lot of the lessons that I learned from Jim and tried to put them in place in Lawrence Central. Um, Technique-wise, we've always kind of been on the same page, but each coach has their own little mm -hmm. things that they enjoy. Um, there are a few drills that we do that are very similar to the way we did things at Warren, but um, I have, I've had to, been lucky to, to work with a lot of great coaches in my coaching career. Um, I grew up wrestling for Brett Krauser and Jim Humphrey and Tom Corbett. I was able to be an assistant for Chad Red at Lawrence Central and Red Cobra, mm -hmm. and then spending a few years under, under Jim Tante. So I've had some incredible coaches to learn from, and I've just kind of tried to take bits and pieces of what I've learned from each one, put my own spin on them, and, and put it all together to make, I guess, my style or my yeah. system, if you will. Looking at this year's uh, Lawrence Central team, is there uh, certain guys who you can rely on, do you think, to kind of lead the way for you? Kind of still building that a little bit? Or? Oh, um, yeah, we've definitely got some, some outstanding leaders. Um, our senior, Jesus Mancera, is a returning state qualifier. He's a very quiet kid, but he doesn't have to say much. His, mm -hmm. his hard work and his attitude do all the talking. Mm -hmm. uh, he works his tail off every single day. He demands the absolute best of himself and of his teammates, and he holds everyone accountable. So it's been tremendous to have him in the room. And unfortunately, a football team lost to, to Ben Davis in the sectional, but I wanted them to go compete for a state title, but now I was able to get some of my football guys in the room mm -hmm. early. So I've got guys like Darion Gregory and Deshaun Brooks and Alicia Caldera and Trevon Booker, who have been around the program for a while. These guys have had uh, a certain level of success, but that, that, dis that disappointment from their sectional loss, they've kind of carried it with them into the room, and they've just been working their tail off. Um, they're a lot more vocal mm -hmm. as far as leadership in the room and at tournaments. Uh, they do a good job of keeping everyone in line. Accountability is a big thing, and I try to treat them like young men and young women, and I, I hold them to a certain standard, but they're holding themselves to a certain standard and making each other accountable for what they're supposed to do. And, and that's allowed us to, to have a, a pretty good start to our season so far. All right. Well, Thomas, really enjoyed the visit. I appreciate you coming on, and uh, best of luck to you and, and Lawrence Central this year. Thanks so much. Appreciate you it. Bet. Thanks. Sure. We'll be back here with another segment on Around the Mick. Uh, here at the Marriott East, I'm Kyle Nedrent from the Indy Star.
Well, back with a special segment here on our Around the Mix show and, and uh, kind of a, a neat thing we've been able to do the last few weeks. It's our uh, Marriott uh, Athlete of Character Award and this week it's, it's Kayla Britt and uh, congratulations Kayla on, on being honored with this award. You bet. Well, Kayla, if you want to start off kind of talking a little bit about yourself, I know you're an uh, exceptional volleyball and softball player, and, and, uh, but there's more to you than that. So, uh, you know, kind of tell us a little bit about what you enjoy, uh, not only athletically, but kind of off the field as well. Yeah, well, I love school most of the time. So I'm a big <laughs> science person. So um, I really want to be an engineer when I get out of college. Um, I honestly, exciting. I just stay at home a lot. <laughs> I read a lot of books. Um, I love volleyball and I love softball so much. I just love playing sports. I've played them all my life. Just every sport that you can imagine. I've, I've played it probably. Karate, golf, <laughs> just everything. <laughs> Well, joining us too, Kevin and Karen uh, Britt, uh, Kayla's parents, and, and Karen, you know, what, what does kind of... What, what? It's Kathy. Kathy, I'm But sorry. that's okay. Kathy, I'm sorry. Uh, what, what does kind of make Kayla tick and, and, and what she does athletically? And, and uh, obviously she does, does great in the classroom yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, you know, I think she's just, she's a hard worker. She likes, she takes pride in being a leader. Um, and she does, she is so interesting because she has so many other hobbies. She's a Doctor Who fan and, and uh, a, a nerd um, athlete combination that we just <laughs> adore. So... Right. Yeah. Kayla, what is, you know, uh, you, you mentioned all the sports you played uh, uh, growing up. What, what, what is it about volleyball and softball, I guess, that uh, maybe clicked with you the most or, or uh, that you still enjoy about those sports? Yeah, well, it helps that all of my sisters grew up playing softball and my oldest sister played volleyball. So it was kind of like, a, I can be better than them, I can be better than them. Um, but I just... They're, they're honestly such different sports that it is weird that I, I'm into both of them. Volleyball is such a quick paced sport and it's so fast and you're with your team the whole time and then softball is kind of slower paced. Uh, you don't really communicate with your team that much, you do, but just not as much as you do in volleyball. But I just love the diving and the, the action that you get with every play and it's just, I love it so much. It's great. Kevin, I know you've been around athletes uh, in your own uh, job and world. Uh, you know, wh how fun is it to watch your own uh, daughter play, uh, play in her sports? It can be very nerve-wracking at times. <laughs> um, and, no, it's great. It's great to watch her play. And, and uh, I enjoy watching her because she is competitive. And she does things well, not only on the field, but off the field. And I know she's a hard worker, and, and her coaches have always appreciated her being part of the program. Kayla, what, what are your uh, college, you mentioned uh, wanting to be an engineer, but uh, yeah. what, what, what comes next for you in college? What are your plans? Yes, I am going to play softball at Taylor University and hopefully become a biomedical engineer. Okay. Yeah. What would you like about Taylor's uh, uh, program? What do you like about that? Um, my sister actually went there and played softball, and so it's, it helps me to know what I'm, what coach I'm getting myself into. And he's just a great guy, and I love him so much. And I just love the the closeness of the school and just how active everyone is. And it's a beautiful campus. Wait, when you look at this year, you're in uh, in volleyball season. Uh, or you were in volleyball season. What 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 did you, you know, what was your experience like this year uh, playing for Ben Davis's team? Um, this year was definitely my favorite year. Mm -hmm. um, I loved playing with all of the girls. There really was not that bad of drama, which is usually a, a big <laughs> thing for female sports. Um, but I had my best friend as my co-captain right by my side, and so I just we got respect from everyone, and everyone was just working their butts off out on the court every single day, and I just loved it so much. What do you expect out of your softball team this year? Do you guys work uh, in the off season? Are you doing stuff yeah. even now to get ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah we are. Um, it, it might be a tough year. It's kind of a rebuilding year. We lost a lot of seniors last year, a lot of big key seniors. Um, but I know my coach has big plans for bringing in freshmen. She really loves building people from the beginning. She just loves getting athletes who can do anything. Um, she doesn't care if you play softball or not. She knows how to how to build someone. So I'm excited. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you, I know you're doing very well in school. What what are your favorite subjects in school, and, and have they changed through the years since you were a, a kid, or has it always been the same? It's always been a general theme, but it honestly depends on the week. Yeah. You know, one week I love AP Biology, and then she gives us a test, and it's AP Calc. I mean, it's just it depends. 
but I just I love the teachers too. I'm just being able to be in the classes I am. I'm just I get to be so close to my teachers and all my students or all my classmates. So. Well, Kayla Britt, one of the uh, shining stars in the mic, and I appreciate you uh, coming on the show, and, and congratulations on this award. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be back here with our uh, wrapping up uh, this uh, our segment on Around the Mick for this week. Uh, again, Kyle Nenrit from the Indy Star, and uh, thanks again to the Marriott East uh, for having us out. Wrapping up our show tonight here from Marriott East, we want to thank uh, the Marriott East Papa John's uh, Front Runner Media uh, for sponsoring the show. Uh, we had a great show tonight. It was uh, our awards, football awards, Cameron McGrown again uh, from Lawrence Central, our Defensive Player of the Year, and uh, Reese Taylor uh, coming off a state championship at Ben Davis. Uh, quarterback was our Offensive Player of the Year. Also had Mike Kirster, the Ben Davis coach on, and I appreciate Kayla Britt, our uh, athlete of character uh, and her family for coming out and joining us tonight. And uh, we'll be back here with it. We'll have one more show uh, before the holiday break. And uh, we'll be talking again uh, basketball and some wrestling. Uh, and again, as we get into, uh, into those winter sports seasons. So again, Kyle Nedrett from the Indy Star. And uh, thanks again for the Marriott East for uh, hosting us for tonight's show. Thanks again.